everyone and welcome to another episode of Toon Talk with me, Isha. In yesterday's episode, I covered all the post-match chat from our two victories over the past week. I'll leave the link for that below. And today it's time to cover some Newcastle transfer talk and also a match preview for this weekend's game against Brighton. So remember to subscribe if you haven't already and also comment below your predictions for the Brighton game. I'm joined by Sharky from Toon Army TV again, so let's get into it. So, let's talk transfers. Now, Yoshinori Mutu, he has definitely completed his loan switch to La Liga. Now, with Dwight Gale's injury, we're now two strikers down. A centre forward is needed ASAP. Those were my first thoughts. What about you when you heard the news about Mutu? Yeah, like I could see it coming. Mutu's potentially fifth choice now, isn't he, at the football club with obviously Callum Wilson coming in is now the main focal point. We've got obviously Joe Linton, Dwight Gale's injured at the minute. You've got Carroll, of course, who's another striker who we can use at the minute with Gale being injured. He's another striker who um, could do something in the match. But yeah, you are right about uh, about maybe bringing in that extra striker. But in terms of Mutu, I think it is the right move for him uh, getting that game time because yes, we paid 9.5 million quid for him plus add-ons. However, if you're not getting the game time, then it's best that you move and start, you know, playing games elsewhere. You're still a Newcastle player, but if you go if he goes to La Liga for the new season, which he has done, but Ibar bangs in the goals and looks good, mm. then the club have got an, an option to either let Ibar buy him or the club can go option two and give him a chance for the the new up and come season sorry, the new up and coming season for next. Mm. Um Mudu, I, I do feel sorry for because you know, he was brought in by the board. I don't believe he was a Rafa Benitez signing, was he? Um, he didn't no. really get given the game time and he wasn't given the game time by Steve Bruce last season. If, if you're not in Bruce's plans, then you know there's a problem. Um, mm. you, you, you say we're strikers down. Well, there was talk of uh, Divock Origi uh, for Liverpool being linked. Yes. Yeah, no, I've, I've, that's done the rounds a lot this week. And I just think as long as I hear the rumours about centre forwards, then I'll be happy because I'm like, they know what they're doing. Mutu is out the door, fine. But what are the other options? Because what is it? Three weeks left of the transfer window now. That was my main concern. Like, I'm happy to see him go, but we need to be looking at another option for our, you know, our attack. So... I guess you're right in what you say. Like, if you look at our striking woes last year, if he still didn't get a game during that period, I mean, he's a hardworking lad and it seems like he just didn't have a place with us. And that's kind of sad because, like I said, he's hardworking. We, we always want to see a hardworking, you know, lad come to us in the black and white stripes. But in the, lit the little game time he had with us, he scored against Man United, I guess. And, and, Le and Leicester and a lesson in that cup game, exactly. So that's no easy feat. And I think I think it's a good deal for him. I agree with you. I think it's a great deal for him. He'll get some game time there. Hopefully he'll get some goals. And if he does get his goals and make his way back to us and we can, or at least stays there, we can recoup some of the cash, then I'll, I'll be more than happy. You know, he's playing, he's getting goals. We're still able to make a bit of quick cash from him. So that's my view on him. Um, now well, let's I move... Can, can, yes, can I just quickly, just before you just before you move on on um, Mudu, just to say that um, because he wasn't getting games, how Joe Linton was getting the games that he was getting last season, and Mudu was getting pushed out when he probably could have done more than what Joe Linton did last season, give him yeah. more game and give him more of a chance. But yeah, you are right about the financial side. Like right now, we're not going to get nine point five billion back for Mudu. We're not even probably going to get half of that. So if he does well with Ibar, then financially it's good for the club because you got to remember he's still on a long contract. So if we can get him going in La Liga then I think financially it's good for the club. So we'll see where that goes for the new season, but wish them you know, all the best for the season. Yeah, exactly. And also, I think with Joel Linton, like, I was convinced that it must be in his contract that he's guaranteed game time. A, a, a lot of the time when I saw the starting lineup throughout the season, I just thought there must be some mandatory every game start clause in there because there's no other option for it when the likes of Mutu are sitting on the bench. But I guess that those kind of details, we're, we're never really going to know. It's just, it, it did blow my mind sometimes. And I thought that's the only reasonable explanation for getting a start every single game when you're not delivering. Yeah, now, the, 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 the board are very hush-hush, that, that's a thing. So you're not going to find yeah, out the whole deal. We'd, we'd never find out, exactly. It's just an assumption I made to sort of 
I don't know. It, it just answered a question I had every time I saw his name on the starting 11. So there's a French youngster on Tyneside. He's on trial with us. His name's Florent Indelessio. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his surname, but yeah, um, he used to play at Saint Etienne. And honestly, I've never seen him play, but thanks to Alan St. Maximin's Instagram, now I have seen him play because he shared a video of him in training and he looks like he scored a screamer as well. Do you know much about him? And if so, would you be interested in this signing? I don't know much about him, if I'm being brutally honest with you. I did see it in the news this week that we had somebody in from St. Etienne who potentially could be signing. If he's any good, then yeah, why not? I mean, try and get him into the uh, reserves and get him some game time. And if he does well there, then potentially try and force him into the first team. I mean, if mm -hmm. he's only going to cost a little bit of money, then yeah, why not? Yeah, no, agreed. I, similar to you, like I said, I have, I don't, I didn't really know about him. I hadn't really watched him, but there are loads of videos um, going around on Twitter of him crossing, finishing and passing whilst he's on trial with us. So he's obviously out here to impress us. And you know what? He, he is mates with Alan St. Maxman, right? <laughs> Good chemistry and, there, good chemistry. Yeah, yeah, and that's always a good thing on the pitch. My only concern is that he was actually dismissed by the league and club for bad behaviour. So that's something to bear in mind because we don't want any bad boys heading to us, you know? We, it's not, we, we don't need that right now. We need, we need decent characters coming to us, you know, with a clean record. And I think he's 23 years old, you know, that that isn't that that young you know what you're doing so that's something to bear in mind if we are if you know talks of a signing are progressing with him now let's move on to Jetro Willems now his fate at the club it's still unclear he's teasing us with these social media posts it's doing that. my head in Ugh! he tweeted on my way and then he removed Newcastle from his Twitter bio, which is actually quite serious because it's one thing pranking us with these cryptic tweets and Instagram posts, but to remove it from your Twitter bio, I, I don't feel good about this. He's made it clear he wants to stay. He couldn't have made it clearer that he hasn't, he, his loan spell was cut short with the injury, okay? And he didn't really achieve everything he wanted to on Tyneside. He's excited to get going and, you know, he's almost at full fitness. He has been training, he's doing almost everything. It's just a shame that signings like that aren't really prioritised right now. You know, we're looking at other options. We're seeing the grass is always greener. What else is on the transfer market? What do you want to happen with him? Jethro, I was impressed with his loan signing last year. It was just a shame that it was cut short due to the injury against Chelsea. You know, it's very, very unfortunate because I feel like he really got that good vibe about him. He was good with the fans and the fans loved him. And he just felt like um, an all-round good guy, like a very good player, a player you could rely on. He was very attacking, you know, from left back. And you, you look at his style of play, I mean, the, the goals that he scored were quite good. I mean, the one against Liverpool, which was voted the NUFC uh, goal of the season. Yes, what a goal. yeah. What a, goal, yeah. what a goal at Anfield. If only it was at the, at the cop end, would have been Aww. better. But, but, yeah. but you know what, the way he took that, the way he just... You know, you bend it into the top uh, right-hand corner. What a finish. And, um, yeah, like, he was just a good all-round player. Like, he come with some experience of being in the, in the German Bundesliga with Frankfurt. In terms of bringing him back, now that we've got Jamal Lewis, where does he fit? Because Jamal Lewis, for me, he's, he's, he's a younger player as well. I think he's got a lot of experience. I mean, you could play... Um, you could play him in a different position, maybe. It's probably welcome competition, isn't it? If you bring him back, I mean, it would do well for the the morale of the, of the city. You know, bringing in you know Jetro, who loves the fan base, and we love him. Mm. It's a difficult one because, as you say, he said uh, it was like a cryptic message. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm coming. Let them know I'm coming. Mm. He, he removes it from uh, Newcastle from his Twitter bio. It's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, some fans will say, well, because we got Jamal Lewis, we're, we're okay. But I welcome him back. You know, I think. I think Somebody who, you know, lifts the mood, lifts the spirit of the city and he plays for the... Do you know what it is? He played for the badge. He played for the shirt. Exactly. He, he, got, he got everybody off their seats as well, you know, when, when you watched them. And when he scored, it meant so much to him that mm -hmm. he wanted to stay. And I just think the, the injury hasn't really helped him in terms of, you know, bringing him back this early. That's why we've had to react with Jamal Lewis. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, I, I'm in favour of bringing him back if it, if it means that we've got healthy competition. But if he doesn't come back... 
then he goes with my best wishes. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think I'm just, I think when it comes to a player who has been able to connect with us as a fan base, has shown that he is more than willing to stay, you know, he even, he's sort of resentful that he wasn't able to fulfill everything he wanted to at the club. He's shown, we've seen glimpses of potential. I think <clears throat> rather than getting new additions, Jamal Lewis will be great. I have my every faith in him. But we do still need options. And I think rather than shopping around for new options, no, keep him as an option. Yeah, he, knows the, he knows the dynamics of the team. He's a great backup. Like you said, the competition might be good for him. And yeah. I believe that his contract with his club in Germany is up in the summer. So, you know, I think business-wise, it works out well, even if he's not fully fit for another few weeks or even a couple of months, that option for me is the best option we can have. And more than anything, if he wants to stay with us and he is proud to be part of the club, he deserves it, you know? And I, I, we've seen enough players who don't want to be with us or are not mentally there and, I will always prioritise the players that want to be with us and have no shame in expressing that to media. And he's done that over the whole summer, you know. Oh, um, it's kind of like a come and get me plea. I haven't fulfilled what I wanted to. I would be more than happy to stay. I don't know the fate of my contract. Like these things, it, it takes a lot for a player to have no ego and just to be like, I'm here, come get me if you want me. Well, Isha, I I'll, 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 I'll send you a question back then. Do you, do you think he's going to resign? Do you think he'll, do you think he'll be a Newcastle player? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, do you think that uh, Jetro Williams will sign for the club? Do you think well, he's... The thing is, um, I, don't know if he's I don't know if he's trolling us because, you know what, is a really good move here, okay? He has made a plea to us. He has said, I want to stay, you know, and he is attracting interest from elsewhere or he could just go back to Germany, whatever. If he's put that out there and we haven't done anything about it, he makes a cryptic tweet. He removes it from his bio. I just hope that the team at the club are looking at that like, oh, hold on a minute. He could actually just go. We haven't, we haven't put pen to paper yet. And the the outrage, like last night on Twitter, the fan base going crazy over like, oh my god, don't go. No, 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 don't go. And. I just think if, if this is a power move by him, I'll be so happy. If this is just his way of showing, I don't know what I'm doing and come and get me if you want, speed up the process, then great, I'll be really, really happy. But I, you just don't know, like this transfer window has been so unpredictable. So unpredictable. The, the, the thing is, we're, we're gonna do, by the looks of it, trying to be more positive, we are gonna be doing more deals as, the next few weeks progress on you know we're yes. going to get rid of some of the dead wood as Steve Bruce alluded to but we are going to bring in players we are going to have to address you know that forward and if we can bring in Willems then I'm, I'm all for it because he's attacking he can get forward you know he's so exciting to watch mm. and he just has the right attitude and they can say if it doesn't go through then it's one of them isn't it it just passes you by you know it, but you do, you do want that good vibe like you do want players who want to be here who want yeah. to play you know for the shirt play for the badge play for the fan base Mm. Yeah, it, it was a strange one, you know, look, looking at it. But it's like, I, did, I didn't read too much into it, in a sense, because you just wait and see how it materialises, see what comes off in, you know, the coming weeks. But listen, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, well, you, you've got to wish them the best, haven't you? But fingers crossed, we can get it Fingers all crossed. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Because we, we are definitely going to make more signings, and I'm excited for that, 100%. It's worked well for us so far. They've just sort of got stuck in. But I don't, yeah, we need to get rid of some players, yeah. I don't want to totally dismantle the squad, you know. Uh, with Lejean, I was a bit like, oh, okay, he's not on top form. I get it, I'm happy for him to go. But at the same time, all those elements that make up the squad and the backbone of the squad, you can very easily dismantle that when you take away key players. Willems is one of those players where I'm like, wow, he really was quite integral when he was playing with that potential and he, he, he was a main starter though wasn't he each game he yeah. wasn't like he was on the bench he was always starting games which was good for the confidence exactly he knows what he's doing he knows the dynamics of the squad and to get someone in the sometimes are teething problems you don't know i think he's a great option and i hope it goes ahead like I said fingers crossed you mentioned lejeune as well he's another one like 
we signed him in 2017 thinking that he was going to be the next best thing he could get into the French side. And you know what? I hoped that he could have done something for Newcastle. But again, he's been plagued with injuries. He's been sent out on loan to the La Liga. Maybe it's good for him. And maybe it's good for the club. We don't know what Lejeune's like behind the scenes. But, yeah. You know, when you scored a couple of goals in what, three years, that's that's not good enough, do you know? But um, to be I think fair, you've, got to, you've, got, Everton... you've, got to, you've got to keep the side together. The stoppage time goal, uh, the Lejeune goal, the Everton thing, that is probably my most memorable goal of the season. Like, Pick I... Up. Oh, it was so good. So good. It's not enough. Agreed. It's not enough. But man, I'm sure he... Memories, memories, it. memories. That's what they were. Exactly. And I'm sure that's way up there, his top Newcastle memory. The tweet, the tweet as well uh, by an Everton fan. Oh, good 2-0 win. All of a sudden, 2-2. Two, two. Let's be honest with you. If we'd actually done a bit more before before we got the two goals, we could have won it. Like Everton like, just switched off in, in, in stoppage time. The pick oh, yeah. showed what he, he was really about. But... Yeah, like, you know, there were a couple of goals by Lujum, but, you know, memorable ones in a sense. But I can see yeah. why he's been shifted out on loan because if you're plagued by injuries, then you need to get game time. And maybe who knows what's going to happen with Lujum. Maybe he's going to be another um, Mutu. He'll be sold, maybe. Come maybe. The end of, but we'll wait to and see. With these good guys, honestly, if they've been a loyal servant to the club, they're not getting game time or they're injured or they're not getting goals. I just think, you know what? good see ya that's fine you've done what you can and I'm thinking if we can make money on you even better go do your thing and if we can sell you on whatever then fine okay so another player DeAndre Yedlin now I heard he could be heading back to the MLS on a free transfer yeah but okay oh okay so I already know your answer what are your thoughts you want him to go yes I don't think he's good enough if I mean being brutally honest with you okay I think he's yes he's got the pace but he can get forward, but he doesn't track back. He makes too many mistakes. He, he gets caught out too often. It's been proven, like, under Steve Bruce, it got proven under Rafa Benitez. Yes, he was very good in the championship, the second division, but mm. you've got to try and do it in the Premier League. And I think down his end, we were conceding too many goals. We were just making too many basic errors. And you want the lad to do well, but it just seems like over the course of the summer, he just doesn't look settled anymore. It, it sounds to me like he's had a few problems uh, with, with his family and whatnot and what's been happening over the, the course of uh, the summer. <sighs> For me, I'm not a massive fan of Yedlin, if I'm being brutally honest. I think he okay. can't be replaced. But I'm sure you may have a different opinion. The thing is, yes, he's down the pecking order. He's our third choice, you know, right back. But I can't see us letting him go on a free transfer. I just no, think... No, no, follow- not free. Yeah, that, that's what I'm reading. I'm like, hold on a minute. No, 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 no. With his experience in English football, he's still just 27 years old. I think he's he's probably worth, you know, at least a couple of million pounds. And about I would rather... Well, do you think five? About, about five. But for what he could, for his pace and stuff, for his age and what he could offer, I, I would say mm. so. Like, you know, mm. if any club really wants Yedlin, they would bid at least five million quid for him at the most. I mean, if, you, if, they're, if an MLS club are getting in for free, yeah, that's, for me, that's that's it's not even, it's beyond a bargain. Like it's I literally know. just picking someone out off the floor and saying, "Right, come on, you can come play for us." Even if you get him for a couple of million quid, like it's a yeah. steal in my eyes. Like he's yeah. yes, he's got the Premier League experience, but no, he's not good enough at the level. But yeah, yeah but I for just, his for his age and all, no, yeah. if I I would not be happy letting him go on a free. That is not on, and that's what I'm reading. Like a reporter tweeted that yesterday it's looking like it would be a free. And I just think I'd rather keep him as a backup unless we can settle for a reasonable fee. That was the only thing that was putting me off getting rid of him. Otherwise, I share the same views with you. And like you said, we need to shift the dead wood. And, um, but not for free. No, not having that. The thing, the thing, the thing is, we've, we've got Mankiw as well, who's just saying that uh, long-term contract. So he's going to be a mainstay at right back. And yes. you look at them, the rest of them, you know, they're all... A, a, you know, in the peck, high up in the pecking order to where uh, Yedlin is. Don't get me wrong, he's been a good servant to the football club, but as you say, like, I wouldn't be happy letting him go free. I wasn't doing that for the sake of, like, free, free. It was more just get rid of him. I think he's yeah. a, bad, a bad egg in the in the squad. Mm. And as you say, we need to clear the deadwood. It's about time because, you know, we've, we've got, what is it, 29 players in the squad now? And Steve yeah. was talking about it. That's not healthy, he was saying at the press conference. We need to get that down. We need to get our main registered 25-man squad that are good enough at this level because we've got too many players like Sabe, like Atsu, like Yedlin, just to name a few, that are simply not good enough, not only for this football club, but they're not good enough for Premier League level. 
and then he had shifted on very, very quickly. Oh, that's quite the statement. But I have to agree with you there. I can't deny that for sure. I don't see a lot of our dead wood. The thing is, where, where, where do they fit? Exactly, yeah. Where do they fit? And you know what? One thing going into this season that made me optimistic about the signing was the ages, you know? We, we are an ageing squad that we're not the most youthful. We need youth injected where we can. And that also shows like a long-term plan. You know, we're getting this younger boy in. He has potential. Let's work him into the squad. And unless that's happening, we can't keep, you know, even our back line that everyone's on the lower end of 20 years old, you know, like approaching 27, 26. I think, how, how old is Lejeune? Is he 27? 20, 20, 28, I think. 28, there we go. If I think he's wrong with that, don't, don't quote us on it. We might have to I check know. with Peter later, but he's... Yeah, he, yeah he's know. at that higher end now where he just needs to get that game time, you know, we're trying to get it, trying to get him sold on. But you look at the, you know, the whole squad, but you talk about bringing in that young lad, you know, we need to bring in more young players to, you know, yeah. to blow up and get them into the side and get rid of some of the dead wood. And that's what we've been there lacking in the last few transfer windows. We've been keeping on players like Callback in the past and Saibé, who are just, you know, taking a wage for the sake of it, not good enough. And Atu, we know he's not good enough. Saibé, Aarons. We need to keep building the side. You know, we've, we've had such a good transfer window so far. We, we do need to add to it. That's key. We do need a striker. Yeah. And we do need to improve else in other areas, but it's important that he trims down the squad. And it's not me having to go to those players. I'm sure they're going to be good for another club. But mm. right now, at this level, for Newcastle United, they've proven over time that they're not good enough. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. So now we're going to look ahead to the Brighton game this Sunday. Woo! So Brighton, they've just come off to a 3-1 defeat to Chelsea. Now... Callum Wilson has another good record against Brighton with Bournemouth. He scored three goals and he got two assists in five encounters. What are your expectations going into this game? Well, we'll come off the back of a good... Well, I wouldn't say it was a good game. It was, we'll come off the back of a 1-0 win against Blackburn. We'll come off a very good win against West Ham. So we've won back-to-back -back games. So the confidence in the camp is going to be very, very high. Brighton, of course, off the back of a defeat. As we speak, they've got a Carabao Cup game tonight. Brighton, I do believe, they have mm -hmm. picked up some injuries. I think Lalana went off against Chelsea. But do you know what? With the confidence, why can't we go into the Brighton game with another positive you know, result, another positive performance? And Brighton, over the last few seasons, have been a bit of a bogey team for us. Like We haven't really done well against them. You know, Brighton have either won the game 1-0 or we've just got like a scrappy 0-0 or 1-1 or something like that. Why can't we just turn it around for the new season? Because... Yes, we know Brighton are gonna. They're gonna have a. a they're gonna have more of the. I want to say well. I say more of the ball. They're gonna have. They're gonna pose a bigger, bigger threat than West Ham. I believe they're a better side than West Ham. They're gonna be there in their boats come the end of the season. I've got them. Is it ten for me predictions? They're gonna be mid table. I think they're gonna be higher. But mm. you, the games are obviously at St James's Park. If we play like we did against West Ham, I don't see why we can't be Brighton. I think we've we've got enough in the tank. We've got enough quality to to get the job done. And I just want to see we score more goals. You know that I want to see we be more clinical. That's the only negative I take from West Ham. We beat them 2-0, yeah. but it could have been so much more. It could have been 4-5-6. But Wilson's looking very, very good. You mentioned he's got a very good record against Brighton, so that can only you know, stand us in good stead going into the match. Lewis looked very positive, and if we can get him good, if we can get ESM good, if Nicky starts, then yeah, I think we've, we've definitely got a chance. But Brighton, there are going to be no pushovers because defensively, yes, they're conceded free against Chelsea, but they're not going to play Chelsea every week. The odd defensively a good side, they're a tough side to break down, but mm. they have brought in some quality players. So I do expect them to, to make it tough for us, but it's not a game that we can't win. I totally agree. And I think it's important to mention, you said their cup game is today, right? Tonight? Yes. Yes. So they, the Chelsea game was on Monday. So it's, it's a tricky week for them. That's going to be a challenge. Are they going to have to either rotate? And um, yeah, that's something to bear in mind. I think also, for... also, also, not to mention, we've had a couple of days extra on Brighton as well because we play Tuesday, they play tonight, Thursday. Yeah. And then they've got, to, like you mentioned, they've got to quickly recover. We've had what? So we've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We've got like four days really to recover and, and get on mm -hmm. with it. But the players are going to have to get used to that. We're going to have to get used to playing games, you know, every three or four days because. That's the sort of game we're in now. We're playing catch up, but as you mentioned, for Brighton, it's how they go about it. Like how they go about it after the, the cup game. I don't know mm. who they're playing, but it's going to yeah, be a game that we need. We need to give it 100 percent because if we do, for me, I think we'll win it. 
Yeah, and I think momentum is key, isn't it? Especially at the start of a season, like you said, emotions will be high. We've had, we're coming off two wins, and okay, the Blackburn win, like you said, we weren't the better side, but a win is a win. Within the last week, to get two wins and go into a Brighton game, the mentality should be, we can win this. We can keep this up. And I think for me, I want Mark Gillespie to start. Okay. I have every faith in him. I think seeing as our, all of our new signings have been scoring on debut, I would be delighted to see Jamal Lewis get on the score sheet. <laughs> I'm joking. He might, he might not. But I think as soon as we signed him, um, right, as soon as we signed Ryan Fraser, okay, his enthusiasm was on a hundred. You know, he showed that he's got a lot to prove. He's making up for how it ended at Bournemouth and the season prior, if we look at his form, he, it was the 2018-2019 season, it was brilliant, you know. No, sorry, 20, no, the season, this season, sorry, no, this season, 2019-2020, right, was a good yeah, season yeah. for him. It's the been one that before, sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and then obviously he, it didn't, it ended quite sourly with Bournemouth. I think he's still got a lot in the tank. He's got a lot to prove. And I'm excited for him. I'm excited for him and Callum Wilson to just... The, the, the link the link up players there, isn't it? Exactly. To the revive that partnership. They were such a dynamic duo in that season prior at Bournemouth. Last season, you know, it, it wasn't a good one for him. And it wasn't a great one for Callum Wilson either. But if they've still got it in themselves to revive that lethal partnership, I'd be the happiest Newcastle fan going into the rest yeah, of the season. Is. You look at Bournemouth last season, yeah, they had a lot of struggles. Obviously, Eddie Howe, his future was obviously up in the A's now left. No disrespect to Bournemouth in any way, despite our struggles as well last season. I believe we've got a better side than, than Bournemouth. You know, you look at the likes of ASM and Miggy, who, are, you know, is learning all the time. You think there, for Ryan Fraser and Callum Wilson and Jamal Lewis, they're coming into a side that's already got, you know, years of Premier League experience of, you know, that what, fourth season. They're going to learn, you know, they're going to learn around these players, you know, like ASM, He's going to benefit from a player like Jamal Lewis, who's very positive, you know, getting forward from left back. You've got that um, Ryan Fraser connection with uh, Callum Wilson. He's got pace. They've both got pace, and we needed more pace into our side. Like, mm. up front is where we struggled massively. But if, if we had more injection of pace into the side, which we have done, we create more chances. And if you create more chances, you score more goals. And because we lack goals, if you score more goals, you, you, you get higher up the league. And that's where we need to be. We don't want to be. Yes, we've finished quite comfortable in 13th place, but this club is so much better than that, despite mm. the ownership situation. With the current side, I don't see why we can't get up more teams, we can't score more goals, we can't win more games, and we can't be higher mm. up the league. It sounds a little cliche, but it, I just think it's <clears throat> it's what we should be doing. We should be aiming no. to, to be more positive. I totally agree. And I think if we're talking about pace, like you rightfully mentioned, Jamal Lewis, he was a cross-country runner. He has bags of pace. He played... He was instrumental in Norwich's promotion to the Premier League. We know how tough that is. <laughs> Getting promoted to the Premier League and being an integral part of a team to do that with a lot of pace. Okay, he doesn't have years of Premier League experience, but he has the pace. He's been part of that Norwich team. And I, I'm, I was really excited about him when I read up on his background for his, you know, athletic sort of experience. That, that pace... You're right. That's what we were lacking. And then, you know, pace can result in goals. And I just hope we we hit... I hope Callum Wilson does hit the double figures that he's been... I think he will. I, he I will, really do. right? He's, he's, yeah, he's, he, listen, he's going to. I think, if he's, yes, we're not going to play West Ham every week. Yes, we're going to play different opposition like Brighton. We're going to play the likes of Man United, Tottenham, Chelsea, Man City. We're not going to get all of the opportunities. But if you're signing players that have got Premier League experience and they've got pace, as you say, then that can only be a good thing going like going forward. And we're, we're going to score and win more games. I think with with Wilson's experience, with him playing alongside of a Miggy and an ASM, and like you know, you look at ASM alone, he likes to break down a defence. You, you know what he can do. I'm excited. You know, you look at Jamal Lewis. You know, he plays at Norwich last season. Yes, he, he got relegated, but for me, he was their best player last season. He was the most positive going forward. And when I found out we were going to sign him, mm. I was so so excited because this guy, like, he's only young. Mm. And already he's going to learn as he goes as he goes forward. He's going to develop, and to be, I reckon he's going to be a fan favorite if he isn't yeah. already. Alois, because he's got so much potential. We know if he does well, he could be potentially sold on. But we don't want to think that that too far ahead. But we we know what this board are like. 
But whilst we've got him, he's going to learn in this Premier League. He's going to learn so much with the players around him, which is most important. Absolutely. And you're right, we have nabbed him at the perfect age. And like we discussed, injecting youth into the team right now is something we haven't done in a while. And that is a prime example of getting a young player with potential and experience, a little bit of experience, perfect signing. I was excited as well when I heard about him. Yeah, can I, can I just mention about um, Ryan Fraser as well? I mean, if yeah. Ryan Fraser, yes, albeit he scored past Blackburn, if he's scoring past a... a, a, a I would say an average championship side, but could be good on that day. If he's scoring but not being match fit, imagine what he's going to be like when he's fully fit. Imagine how many goals he could score. That's you're the true. that's the yeah. promising signs. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Actually, I I just assumed when he was giving it the talk, you know, I'm ready to go. I want Steve Bruce to start me. He was waiting for the green light for the West Ham game, but he was very keen to get going. And I thought, yeah, I'm sure mentally he is. He's he was. In that season at Bournemouth, he was, I think he was set, he provided the second most assists in the whole league. And uh, Kevin De Bruyne. It, yeah, so or was it Eden Hazard? Oh, I can't remember. But yeah, no, I think you're right. And I just think, I, I, I did have my doubts about his fitness, but then for him to, you know, hit the ground running with Blackburn, yes, it's Blackburn. But I do think as he progresses in terms of his fitness levels, it can only get better, right? And especially it's, con that it, 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 it's confidence, so that's what you want early doors. If you can yeah. get to the side, bang in a goal, lift the, lift the mood of the camp. Imagine what he could do against Brighton if he starts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. he's, got, you know, he's got his first game for the two, he scored. You can say the same for Hendrick and, and, and Wilson. That's good though. Like you, you want players to say the right thing in interviews and do the talking on the pitch. You don't want like a, a Joe Linton to say something and then oh, it just massively backfires. Mm -hmm. But like right now, while it's all good and it's all positive, like I am really excited. Like I've never been this excited for a long time looking at the side. Yeah. But it's amazing what can happen if the the club go by what the fans are saying by addressing the key areas where we look weak last season. Yeah, no, I agree. Because we know best. Of course we do. Especially. Twitter Toonami are the strongest people that are out there with the most opinionated views and they need to take note of what we have to say. <laughs> I, okay, let's end with a prediction. For, Bo uh, for Brighton, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 1-0. What about you? I'm going to say 2-1. Two, and two, the reason one. being... Yeah, I just think we'll score a couple of goals, but I think Brighton... They have got their own qualities, they have got their own threats, and I do think if we switch off because you know what, what we're like, we can play really well in the game and we, we can switch off and mm -hmm. it's all important to get that second goal. So yeah, 2-1, another three points, six points from, you know, from two games. Mm. Yeah, like there's, I look at Brighton, they are beatable and we need to try and turn it around. I don't think we've beaten them at St James's since the championship game and that was, was a 2-0. So yeah, yeah like right. I think we, we, are, we are due to beat them mm. and the more we win games, hey, who knows what can happen for the rest of the season. Yeah. Well, guys, you heard it. Sharky and I are cautiously optimistic about this season. We want to hear your predictions. Do you think we're winning against Brighton? Who do you think is going to get on the score sheet? Comment below. And that is about it. So, Sharky, thank you so much for joining Love. me. As I've mentioned, Sharky's channel is the Toon Army TV channel, and he creates so much Newcastle content. Sharky, could you just tell the viewers what to expect as a subscriber? Yes, so I run the YouTube channel Toonami TV, so head over and subscribe if you're new. I, as Isha said, I do a lot of Newcastle United content, or so I try to uh, when I'm not uh, busy. I do match previews, so I build up to a game, just like we have done there, talking all things Brighton. And I like to get interactive in the comments and get your guys' opinions on score predictions, the team lineup, etc. I do match reviews, I talk about you know the game, get me, get me forward to the opinions out there, but also your opinions are you're important as well. I do a lot of match day vlogs um, from Newcastle, but at this moment in time, it's not safe to do so. But I will be getting back to St. James's Park, I promise you. And I will be doing away days. Uh, well, so I do non league games as well, just promoting out non league in the area as it's so important in times like these. But what else do I do? Like just a lot of Newcastle news and trying to keep it up to date where I can. And I do a bit of Premier League as well. So, but yeah, the majority of the channel is is Newcastle related. But yeah, mm -hmm. like come and head, head over, but also subscribe to this wonderful channel. In, <laughs> very good job so yeah thanks very much for leaving me a plug as well i'm gonna leave all the links for toonami tv below so you guys make sure you give them a follow on every single handle that's twitter instagram 
the channel i'm going to put it all below and remember to subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't already for these weekly newcastle updates and much more in between too i'm going to be bringing out loads of fun stuff thanks again sharky for joining me thanks very much and thanks guys for tuning in i'll see you guys next time bye